What is up all you Facebook gamers out there? This is Abster bringing you a gameplay overview slash review. Going to be shooting out a few tips and tricks that I've learned uh, here with Cityville 2. You know, nothing too great, nothing too fantastic. You can probably find this information out or online other places or, you know, figure it out on your own if you have. But if you haven't spent a lot of time on this game yet and you're really kind of kind of confused on the direction that Cityville 2 is taking, uh, hopefully this video will give you a little pointers and help you out a little bit. If you've ever played Cityville, Cityville 2 is, I believe it's a very different from Cityville 1, whereas Cityville 1 was uh, more about building your city and uh, getting a lot of friends, and every once in a while you could uh, request for them. You know, when it first started out it was all about, you could build a building, but in order to get the benefits from these buildings, you had to get it staffed. And, of course, to, to get it staffed, you'd have to ask your friends to, to staff this building for you. And there wasn't really a whole lot of need for requesting things for, for, for friends, for, or from friends. Um, every once in a while, they'd do, like, a sort of event thing where you'd need, like, their winter event, you had to, you needed so many of these items or that item, and uh, you'd have to ask your friends for those items. That's the only way you could get them. Cityville 2 kind of took a took a uh, I think a unique approach to the overall gameplay of uh, how how the how the game plays out, and it kind of switched to a to a crafting system. And honestly, right now it's, it's extremely frustrating because I, I think the game's pretty buggy in that regards. There's a lot of people saying that they're they're having problems with uh, their requests, uh, friend invites, neighbor invites, and item invites. They're it's taken everybody a lot longer to progress in Cityville 2 compared to Cityville 1 because Cityville 2 relies a lot more on crafting and your friends to help you out. I'm gonna go over a quick introduction for Cityville 2. A little, it's, it's pretty much the same when you want to build your buildings. You just click on your, your market. It's now a market now. It's not a build button. And they've got a lot of stuff that you can build here decorations, roads, you know, items for your neighborhood. Um, you can order these with the keys, which is the currency that you're going to use instead of, I think it was called City Bucks in Cityville 1, but in this one it shifted to these keys, which you can find them by getting rewards for clicking on your buildings or your friend's buildings, but it doesn't happen often enough to, to make it even matter. And I honestly, I'm not going to buy into that, so see how far I can get without having to spend any real money on this, because honestly, Cityville 2 is not that interesting of a game for me personally to actually want to spend real money on it. And everything from the way population works to how you build these buildings and how they work are, are pretty different. Uh, this is my city right now. I believe I just hit level 10 not too long ago. Got a, you've got your community buildings here, which are required, similar to uh, Cityville 1. you got to have community buildings to increase the, your maximum population of your city. You build your houses, and from what I understand, the way this works is you plop down a house, and it offers a certain amount of population. Uh, let me bring this up just real quick, just to give you a quick overview. Go to your housing. And as you can see, it offers you 450 population, and this little one right beneath it is the amount of shoppers that it that it can generate for businesses. As you can see, it'll give you one shopper every three minutes. So basically, every three minutes, you click on the house. One, it has this little icon up here. Let's zoom in here a little bit so you can get a better view. It has this little icon over the house, and you basically send out a shopper to your shops. Uh, it's a general tip is uh, make sure that the your all your shops have been collected before you actually send these out. It's not necessary to do so, but it does help your shops cash out faster if you have the experience to burn, or the I'm sorry, the energy to burn. Uh, you'd actually want to make sure that your shops are all collected and then start collecting from your house. And another thing that's kind of new to this, well, that is very new to this game actually, is uh, what they call the I believe it's pronounced. Dubometer, Dubometer. Not too sure on how you're supposed to pronounce that. Uh, when you click on these houses, you see that little that little line there, and you've got to click again 
wants to stop that little line in the blue area. Let's see if I can get it. Boom. And it pops out presents and extra loot if you get it in the blue. And the more times that you land it in the blue, that blue area gets smaller and smaller and smaller. The smaller it gets, the more times you can chain them together, the better the rewards, the better chances you have at getting better rewards. So you always want to be trying to do that. Sending out all these shoppers, and my shops will probably be ready to cash out again before I finish all of my houses here. Because that's, that's the way it works. You're sending out your shoppers after you've cashed out your shops, and they go straight to the shops. And it also works, like, since I've already cashed this out, I can actually click to advertise it. And the people that run from the houses will go to the one I advertised to. As you can see, two of them just ran over there. Let's see, and it's already cashed out, and I'm still not done collecting from houses. So I'm going to advertise for this real quick, and then see if this guy from this house doesn't make a beeline to that store. And sure enough, that's what he does. So if you're trying to collect items because certain items will drop from different types of stores. So if you're looking for a specific item, another tip would be to advertise at the, sh at, the at the store that you're trying to collect an item from before you start cashing out your homes. You also get a little money when you send your shoppers out. Random events. Okay, where did this fire go? Stuff catches on fire. That's pretty different, pretty neat. And it uses the same dubometer, and you've got to nail them all. If you don't, the, the house will continue to burn. I've never let a house actually burn all the way to the ground, so I don't know what happens if you have to rebuild it or whatnot. So yeah, those about the businesses and cashing out your homes, those are a few tips that should help you at least generate cash a little bit more. And this is a special effect that happens when you fill up your approval meter, and you do that by consecutively hitting those the bomb meters in the blue area. So many times it fills up this little bar here and then it goes into basically a happy go joy mode to where that do bomb meter just doesn't show up when you click on these buildings so it's like free it's like bonus. You just don't have to worry about that do bomb meter when you're doing it. And let's see if I can go ahead and expend all this. Get all my goodies. I actually need to clear out, when I get finished with this, I'm actually going to clear out some of these visitors I got in, the, I believe they're taco trucks. Yeah, it's, it's one of the quests, that uh, repeatable quests that you can actually do in your city. Gives you decent rewards when you're ready to cash it out. Helps you progress in all these quests that you see over here. And that's pretty much the same, as they bug the crap out of you with, you've got a crap lot of quests to be doing. I believe you get one pretty much after every time you build something or when you especially when you level up or and it, some of it just might be timed after a certain period of time it just happens so and there there's a lot of quests in this one compared to Cityville 1 I've got like 10 quests to go through and I I'm falling way behind on it and it's and it's just because of the way the the way Cityville plays or Cityville 2 plays is you got to have all these items that you got to request from your friends or that you craft personally yourself. Uh, so not to expend all my energy, I'll go ahead and get some help. Get some of these guys cleared out of here. Dang it. The highest chain I've gotten is 25. No, it was, I believe it was 27. And of course, if you miss that Dubama meter, it start, starts over your chain. That blue line gets wider and wider. Uh, dismissing gift. More taco trucks. Mm. Yes, taco one. That helps your neighbors out when you see those in there. At first, for me, it was pretty annoying, and I really didn't understand what they were. They were just kind of in the way of everything. And then I started understanding once I got my, uh, what is it called, a Mexican food joint. I understand what it was for, and ever since then, I've been clicking on them. So, it's dismissing gift. Alright, now we're going to cover the crafting. Uh, like I said, a lot of the buildings that you want to use require certain materials. If you click on, there's several different crafting buildings. Certain crafting buildings only craft certain materials. Once again, you've got to have items to craft items to finish buildings. <laughs> 
and even some buildings take it a step further and after you get all the materials and then you craft those materials to get the materials that you need to finish this building you actually have to staff the building and it's 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 a long drawn out process i don't i don't, honestly don't know why they did it it's kind of it's kind of frustrating but if you're a fan of the cityville games then you know you deal with it and you live with it that's what we play for cuz in our opinions that's fun it is a very social game cuz if you're not communicating with your neighbors if you're not asking them for things you need and you're not in touch with them it's going to take you a while to progress in this game and you're not going to get very far there are some annoying limitations too like if you come in here this is kind of another tip don't come over here and click on free gifts and pick a random item we'll just say this free battery it's one energy I mean nobody wants one energy but don't do this don't send them these random items because they actually make posts and requests for the items that they need and if that's the first thing you do usually this will pop up right when that when the game loads and if you come in here and you just say yeah I'm gonna send everybody and you just select all you're gonna send these I this item that they're you don't even you're not even sure if they're gonna want and you're gonna use up all your available uh, your send requests because there's a certain amount of send requests that you could do each day I guess it's a 24 hour period it might be a 48 hour period but it's completely bugged either way so there's really no telling but you don't want to be sending those free gifts you actually want to be checking your mail go ahead and check the in-game mail up top up here you want to be clicking on that and this is where your neighbors are going to be asking for the items that they need see this guy's wanting ribbons uh, if you had your hit your cap of uh, send requests you actually couldn't you could still send them through your mail but you couldn't help them out further by if you took a visit to their city and down here which is also a new feature this little chat feature here you couldn't help them out and send them more of what they need because you've already had hit your send request or your send request gift request so you need to try to not get in the habit of not doing these free gifts and just kind of wait and, and monitor what your neighbors are going to be wanting that way you're always free and able to give them what they want so hopefully in turn the idea is that they will actually send you the items that you need so you can progress the game faster another little tip is you see this white little van in here you always want to click that as much as you can because it gives you population every single time you click it I believe you can click it up to three different times as you can see 171 twice so it gives you population so that, that's pretty neat you want to be hitting those vans every single time you see them go ahead and finish out my van here Oop, gotta collect the energy first All right. a lot of things get in the way of everything just gotta kinda have to make do with it of course I could go into full screen mode and make it easier on myself but the way my recording system set up I can't do that without screwing up the picture uh, last thing I'm gonna go ahead and talk about expansions it's pretty different on this one and I, I believe if initially in Cityville you just had to have a certain amount of uh, expansion plans they called them something else and a certain amount of population and you could do it but this one costs you coins, populations, and expansion plans. And even some of the expansion locations are locked until you do a certain quest or you hit a certain level. Like that would be awesome to have that much space right there. But they are asking a crap load of cash, a big population, and uh, those expansion plans. So the expansions are set up quite a bit differently. Um, let's see what else can I talk about oh a night and day system for those of you who don't play this I'm under the impression that you get different items during the night and day I'm not too sure about that but I've heard a lot of stuff about people saying that you get different items during the night and the day take a look at one of these quests over here little mumbo jumbo text bubbles you got with a picture of a animated character there sometimes just click next next and then finally after you are forced to sit through all of that stuff he gives you your quest objectives 
And instead of clicking on that every time, if you just mouse over it and wait a second, it'll actually tell you what the quest is asking for, so you don't have to click it every time. Um, you also have districts. You can actually level these up. They level up faster with parks in them, and they gain bonuses and perks each time they level up, depending on whether it's a housing district, industrial district, or commercial different district, those perks are different. Obviously, restore power. The power went out in this. Another random effect. That's the first time I've seen that. That is really cool. Awesome. Okay, got everything back in working order. <laughs> but yeah, these districts. You obviously want to organize all of your commercial buildings in a commercial district. Housing, housing in a housing district. And if you hoover over the little sign, you can see that white little framework outline of where this district is. Uh, that one was my housing district. This is my industry district. And I believe I'm going to set my commercial up here as soon as I unlock a little more for territory and I can rearrange all this stuff. And you want to put all your buildings of like status in the same district because it, everything moves a lot smoother and faster if you kind of follow the, that, that simple guideline. Uh, let's see if there's anything else I can mention. Down here, I don't, I'm not sure if anybody's aware of this, but uh, there's a green qu uh, lightning bolt by your neighbors down here, and that just tells you that you're able to go to their, visit their city and actually spend your five energy there. I don't know if anybody knew that, but I, th I believe there's a 24-hour cooldown on that as well, visiting a neighbor city. I'm not going to do that because some of these people post their name right up there as the name of their city, and I don't want to be blasting their name out there in public without their permission. So I'm not going to go into anybody else's city. Except for... I think this guy's name... No, where is he? It's the NPC. He was... They, they have one in all of these games where he just has the best of the best stuff and just blows your city away. Where did he go? Surely... Okay. I know he's in here somewhere. Uh, at quite a, there he is, there he is. Governor Maximilian. This is his city. This is something you can aspire to, I guess you could say. If you haven't taken a look at his city yet, highly suggest you do so. He's got a lot of uh, high-level items and buildings in his town. And as far as chugginess and bugginess, uh, Cityville 1, the bigger your city got, it's like the more problems that you're that the game gave you, you'd always have browser crashes, and always have to refresh everything. Cityville 2 doesn't appear to have that issue after it's loaded. When you zone in, you saw those funny colors and they just look like blocks. But after that gets loaded, it seems to run just fine. I mean, you could see that this city's, it's fairly decent size. And he's got a lot of tall buildings, a lot of graphics going on in it. And it, it runs really smooth. I haven't come across uh, the annoying error messages that I am plagued with in, in Cityville. It's why I don't play Cityville anymore because I my city's just so large that it takes forever to load anything and half the time when it does work it'll crash in five minutes and then all that work that I did has been lost and it, it just became too frustrating so I just don't play Cityville anymore. But yeah as you can see the the graphics of it it's pretty neat when you hoover over the side. I don't see if I'll probably have to zoom in to do this, but the camera kind of pitches an angle. I don't know if how well you can see that as you reach the bounds of their city. That's pretty neat. But that is all I've got for you now. Cityville 2 in a nutshell. Uh, it's crafting, bugging the crap out of your neighbors. As far as that goes, uh, speeding that up as fast as you can, you know, just sign up for groups on Facebook find groups if you're in the group that that I've got situated you know that that shouldn't stop you from joining other groups just you know put your link down there say hey add me there's other websites where you can go and post your Facebook link you can actually go just click on the help button up here and it will pop up you can go to their city to cityville 2 forums there's a, there's a section on there where you can just post your your Facebook link and say add me and people will add you and it's kinda like you get neighbor a few couple of neighbors every day and you just don't have to do nothing but post that and 
that's how I'm getting a lot of my neighbors right now is I, I use those forums and I find other forums on the, the internet, the Cityville 2 Add Me forums. Just do a Google search for Cityville 2 Add Me. Anywhere you see advertisement for Cityville 2 and there's a lot of people talking about it or there's a lot of views for it, just go ahead and put your link down there for your Facebook account. But that is, of course, I wouldn't recommend that unless you have a separate second gaming account. If it's your main Facebook account, it's probably not a good idea because you're going to get a whole bunch of strangers looking at all your stuff. I'm not quite sure why people do that to begin with because, you know, Facebook, if you're going to use it to communicate with your close friends and family, you don't want, you know, a thousand random people that you've never heard of or seen of or know personally getting all up in your personal business, looking at your photos, your videos, and your personal life. It's just not very smart. If you don't separate those people from, from seeing that stuff, if you've got too many of them and it's too much work, just create a second account and just have it as your gaming account. It's a lot safer and a lot more secure to do it that way. So, But yeah, just go to those sites and post your link up there and you will get ads. You know, they'll come in slowly, depending on where you post, but you will get new neighbors, you will get ads, and it will help you progress your stuff. And so long as you adhere to those rules about what I, are those tips that I, uh, that I said about only sending people what they request you're gonna get what you want and request so long as you make it known come down here in your little box here and just type in what you need and every time someone comes to your city they'll see a little message in their little city or it'll pop up right above this little text bar and if you if you've got it you know pushed in what you uh, typed in what you need Nine times out of ten, if you're giving them what they need and you're helping them out and you're visiting their city, they're going to return the favor to you. People are all nice like that here on Facebook, especially when it comes to these apps. They're all looking out for number one, but in order to make yourself better in these games, you have to help other people. So, yeah. And I've, from what I understand, this little chat box, it is unique for every neighbor that you visit. Like, if you went to one neighbor's city and you popped up this, it'd have a whole bunch of different text in here. If you went to someone else's city and you popped up this text, it'd have a whole bunch of different conversation going on here. Use that to communicate with people. Like you could drop by and just type in a message, hey man, what are you looking for? What can I send you? And just copy and paste that every time you go into a city. And you'd be surprised by the amount of people that actually come back to you and actually communicate with you and say, hey, if you give me this, I'll be giving you this. What do you need? You know, that's how it goes. And one more thing, let me see. I don't know if people are still doing it, but when I first started playing this game, everybody was kind of just hanging out and chilling out in uh, this Governor Maximilian's, this NPC's city, and they were just chatting it up, asking all kinds of questions. I don't know if people are still doing that. I think it's kind of tapered off and died. Yeah, there doesn't appear to be any thing going on in it now. Maybe because everybody, a lot of players are getting frustrated with Cityville 2 in its current state right now. <laughs> they probably just said the hell with them not playing very often but I have faith in, in, in Zanga they will get on these issues it, it'll take them a while but they'll they'll get them hammered out and it'll it'll eventually work itself out but yeah that's it that's it that's all I've got for you today so hope you enjoyed the video uh, I'm gonna leave a link in the description to a Cityville group that I actually started I'm posting a lot of tips a lot of helpful information that I find out that, that helped me progress and uh, it's a good community got a couple hundred members already uh, shooting out those add me links and hoping to grow the group so if you're interested go ahead and join us it's not gonna hurt the the least you're gonna get out of it is a couple of more neighbors so that's all I've got for you today and thank you for watching